I don't think there's a single person who doesn't want to declutter faster. I mean, getting to our like desired goals, getting to enjoy these benefits sooner, I think is amazing. And I think we all want that, but sometimes it's really hard to know how to get there faster, especially if you're overwhelmed by the clutter in your home, you're overwhelmed by some rooms that are just full of stuff and you don't know where to start and you're, you're kind of paralyzed. I have so been there. I really think that the tips I'm gonna to share today are gonna to help you declutter faster, both physically and mentally. So I'm hoping today's video is really helpful. If it is, please hit subscribe and let's hop right in. Something that can be incredibly helpful is pre-making decisions. This is something that I did when I first started decluttering about a year and a half ago. I would <laughs> literally lay awake at night and think about what kinds of qualifiers I wanted to have for decluttering. What kind of standards I had? What kinds of things was I willing to part with? One example I wanna give you is of cards, like greeting cards, birthday cards. I had saved so many. I probably had a couple hundred. I would filled an entire tote with all of these cards. And I remember feeling like these were all really sentimental. These are going to be really hard for me to part with. And I laid awake at night and I thought, how am I going to do this? Because this is a hurdle I need to get over. And I just realized I had to make decisions before I decluttered the cards. And I realized if it didn't have like a real message inside where somebody had written me a thoughtful note, I wasn't gonna keep it. So that was my pre-made decision. Then when I went in to tackle these cards, guys, it was so easy. And I had put this off for years. I didn't even know how I was gonna begin, but once I pre-made the decision on how I was going to sort through what I was going to keep, it completely mobilized me. I was able to move forward and this project was fast because I had known before going into it what kinds of things I was going to keep. Just like pre-making decisions, I feel like pre-setting boundaries is also really, really crucial. This one is actually kind of easy because your home will kind of set the boundary for you. It doesn't matter what size of home you have. You have your house itself is a boundary. And then within that are smaller and smaller boundaries. So a boundary could be a shelf, a drawer, a cabinet space, a basket, a box, a bin, a tote. I mean, I think you guys get where I'm going with this. Any kind of physical limit is a boundary. So you have to decide how you're going to use the boundaries that are already in your own space, in your own home. So your, let's use the cabinets in the kitchen as an example. So your cupboard space or your cabinet space is a boundary. You want everything to fit comfortably inside, not stuffed inside, not literally spilling out. You want everything to be easy to see, easy to access, and you don't wanna weigh your home down. So think about what that looks like for you. What does a comfortable fit look like for you. I love this idea, this concept of boundaries. So realizing that and then using this space, these boundaries to help you as a guideline moving forward to what you're gonna keep and you're just gonna keep your favorites first. They go in first. So they're kind of the no brainer items. If you have space beyond that for things to fit comfortably, just decide what your next favorite items are. And so use every single space in your home as a physical boundary, keeping your favorite items first. So these are kind of the things you're gonna do beforehand. How am I gonna pre-make these decisions? What kinds of things am I going to keep? And then pre-setting these boundaries, knowing your limits, knowing your boundaries, and then respecting them makes a huge difference and makes this process go so, so fast. Let go of guilt. Guilt can really hold us back. It can hinder our progress, can make it really, really hard to move forward in a decluttering project or in the process of decluttering as a whole. And I think a lot of the guilt that we hold on to is guilt because it was money spent 
or guilt because somebody gave us the item and we really love that person and we don't want them to feel bad that we don't still have that item that they gave us. But again, here is another thing to think of just mentally to get you through this. The money is already spent by keeping that item this is now the item is now taking from you because it's taking your time and your sanity. <laughs> so it's taking all this space in your home. It's making you have to clean it, maintain it, store it, um, and then feel guilty that you're not using it. So there's still this guilt there like, oh, I should be using this item. I paid so much for it. That's guilt on top of all these other things that you're having to suffer. So if you can kind of come to terms with the money being spent already and that's gone, you're not gonna get that back. You could sell the item, but that is not gonna help you declutter faster to sell every single thing in your home. This is another one where you can, sorry, I'm backtracking a little, but it's another one where you can kind of set um, your limits or make predetermined decisions. Like I won't sell anything that's worth less than $25 or less than $50. So that's another way that you can kind of think about it or work through this like guilt over the money you spent. So still set your limits and pre-decide. But if you can just realize the money's already been spent and you're not gonna get it back, but the item keeps taking from you, the longer you hold on to it. I think once we realize that, it's really, really helpful and it can get us moving again. And then the second one being, somebody gave this to me. I really, really, really respect and love the person. I don't necessarily love and use the item. That person did not give you that item as a burden. So by you holding on to it, it actually doesn't fulfill the purpose that it was intended for. Because the person who gave it to you wanted you to love and enjoy it. If you don't, then go ahead and let it go guilt free. That person does not want this item to give you guilt and be a burden in your life. So try and think of it that way. Enjoy the sentiment, the fact that they thought of you and that was the gift and then give the physical item away. Clutter is the enemy to accomplishing your goal. Treat it as such. All right, let's talk about some more physical aspects of speeding up the decluttering process. One is the 10 minute whole house sweep. If you're kind of paralyzed and you're having a hard time moving forward, I highly recommend getting a trash bag and setting the timer for 10 minutes. Try and hit as many areas of your home that you can and just collect things that are broken, things that are obvious garbage and just try and fill up this trash bag. This is a really, really nice way to just get through or break through an overwhelmed feeling where you're feeling a little paralyzed or immobilized by the clutter in your home. This will help get you moving. And I have felt and I've noticed just from personal experience that if you can just get moving, you will just propel yourself. You just have to give yourself that little push and it might feel uncomfortable and you might not wanna do it, but you will be glad you did. It is time well spent decluttering your home, trust me. And I am a person who was, like I said in the beginning, pretty much paralyzed by the clutter in my home and I spent years not moving because I was so overwhelmed. But once I got the ball rolling and I started moving, I was able to propel myself forward and declutter my entire house. So just set that timer, 10 minutes, trash bag, and that at least will get you moving and then you can propel yourself forward from there. There are so many different ways that you can declutter depending on your personality, your style, kind of how you wanna approach decluttering. And I have an entire video dedicated to six different decluttering methods. I will have that linked below. But if you want kind of a no brainer method, if you are just wanting to get this done fast and you're wanting to be ruthless, then the four box method is the one that I recommend. This is the one that I used most often in decluttering my home. It sets the boundaries for you for your decluttering session. It makes it really obvious where to put everything and it just keeps things kind of tidy and organized. Those are the reasons I like it. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a trash bag 
bag, a donate bin, a relocate bin, and then a bin for the items that you want to keep. And now I have had some of you say that you have a hard time knowing what to keep. This is tricky. I totally get it. Use some of the tips that I mentioned earlier in this video, but also something that you can do to help you know if you should keep it is, is it something that you are currently using? Is it something that is currently helping you get closer to the goals that you have for your life? And what I mean by that is, and I touched on this a second ago, but I want to go in depth a little bit more. Like my goals for my house were, I didn't want to clean as often. I was cleaning two hours minimum every day that was time taken away from my kids it was time taking taken away from my personal development and i just didn't feel good about that my clutter was causing me stress i wanted my home to feel peaceful and calm i wanted to be able to invite people over and not have to spend again hours cleaning or feel like i couldn't invite people over at the last minute And part of my home feeling peaceful was me keeping decor, things that brought me joy, things that made my home feel very cozy and comfortable. So you set your own standard, you set your own limits, make your own goals, decide exactly how you want your home to feel. If these items are contributing to that, then keep them. If you're still not sure, go ahead and put them in a box and set them aside in a storage area for just a small amount of time. I've mentioned six months before as a good like time frame for holding on to items. If you don't open the box, if you don't need the item or want the item, then you can go ahead and declutter it. But if you're wanting to declutter faster and get this stuff out of your house, give yourself a month, one month to think about it. Box up the item, tape it up, put a one month, like the, the date of a month from today, what day you box it up. And if it's not anything you've thought about again, or wanted again to pull out or any of that, then you can go ahead and just declutter the entire box and you don't even open it again. I have a couple exceptions. I do not apply this to seasonal decor because it's rotated. So I'm not gonna pull out a Christmas decoration that I absolutely love and adore in the month of March and say, well, I'm not using it and I won't be using it for a few months. So I guess that means I have to declutter it. No, I think seasonal decor is definitely one of those things that you can guilt-free just go ahead and store for an entire year. Sentimental items, whole nother ballpark. You are not necessarily going to be pulling out and looking at these sentimental items on a regular basis. And then baby gear, baby items. If you're not sure if you're done with your family, you might wanna hang on to some of those favorite items. So those are the three categories that I say don't really count in an everyday kind of purge. These are things that you definitely want to declutter. You want to keep your very favorites of, but like I said, you're not necessarily gonna get rid of all of them because they're not contributing today to your goals. They're more of your long-term goals of a comfortable and fulfilled life. Do you have any tips for decluttering faster? I learn so much from you and I would love to chat in the comments. I hope today's video was helpful. Thank you again for being here and I will catch you soon. Bye.